What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS and iPadOS 18.6 to the general public after more than a month of beta testing. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing all of the new features and changes, the performance, the battery life, and if this will be the final update for iOS 18 or not. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.6? So if you take a look at the release notes for this update, it's pretty vague. So it says this update provides a important bug fixes and security updates, and it fixes an issue in photos that could prevent memory movies from being shared. Now, if you tap on the learn more info section, you can see that it does not tell you anything more. That is the only thing that Apple mentions is new in this update. So let's go and take a look at that first and then we'll touch on what else has been changed in this update. So we head into our photos application and then we go down here to memories. If we go into one of our memories right here, so we'll go to this one before an iOS 18.5 and previous versions. If you went up here to share that memory movie and you used another song or a suggested song, it doesn't matter, it would just fail to load right here. So the share sheet wouldn't open up, it would crash, and people were not able to share a memory movie. So that's been fixed here with 18.6, just a minor bug fix. There's also a new CarPlay splash screen that appears on the iPhone when you connect to CarPlay for the first time after updating to 18.6. Also with iOS 18.6, Apple has once again changed the EU App Store rules and fees in order to comply with the DMA, the Digital Markets Act. So you can see here it says that Apple's going to let EU developers with storefronts on the App Store communicate and promote offers for purchase of digital goods or services available at the destination of their choice. And they say that the destination can be a website, an alternative app marketplace, or another app and it can be accessed outside the app or within an app via a web view or native experience. But that's not the only thing that's changed with iOS 18.6 in terms of the App Store and the EU, because now with iOS 18.6, there is a pretty big change to installing marketplaces from the web. So if you go to something like Alt Store or any type of third-party App Store marketplace and you install that, before iOS 18.6, there were warning screens all over uh, you know, when you try to download this. But now with iOS 18.6, that has been changed. So as you can see here, Apple is removing those scary warning screens that EU regulators just did not like and they were pushing back against Apple for. So now when you install a marketplace or an app from the web, there's a new two-step disclosure process. So the first install from a developer takes a bit longer. You have to go through a few more screens, but after that, future installs will be about as easy as downloading an app from the native Apple App Store. So this, of course, is good news if you are in the EU and you are somebody who likes to download those third-party app marketplaces. But in the US, nothing has changed for this because we still do not have access to that. And speaking of other countries, iOS 18.6 was supposed to introduce Apple intelligence to China. So that was talked about well in advance for the past few months, but iOS 18.6 is here and we still do not have AI or Apple intelligence on devices in China. So that has been delayed indefinitely. We might not be seeing that at this point, it looks like until iOS 26 at the earliest. But as far as for those anywhere else, there's nothing new here with Apple intelligence in iOS 18.6. And then if we take a look at the release notes for iOS and iPadOS 18.6, you can see there's only one thing mentioned here and it's a known issue, which is kind of strange, but it's related to healthcare. So it says health data becomes inaccessible when you reach the slide to power off page on an iPhone or iPad without a passcode. So there is a workaround for that and that is just to simply add a passcode or reboot the device. So very strange. That's the only thing mentioned in the release notes, but I would assume that 18.6 will resolve some additional, maybe smaller scale bugs that you might've been encountering on iOS 18.5 or earlier. Also, I noticed that in iOS 18.6, when you send a poll from an iOS 26 device, it now shows sent a poll. It actually gives you a graphic right there. It doesn't load anything, but before in iOS 18.5, it did not show that at all. It only said sent a poll, the text only. It did not show this little thing you could click on, which doesn't work right now, like I said, but that is something that's changed, very minor. And one thing that's been a constant issue for the past few months with iOS 18 has been a laggy keyboard. So fortunately, 
unfortunately, a lot of people in my Discord server and also on X have reported that the keyboard lag has been resolved with iOS 18.6. So it may be resolved for you as well. If you were having that issue, it's worth checking out and seeing if it fixes it for you. A lot of times that is related to storage, like low storage on your device or the fact that it's just running really hot. But regardless, it might be fixed with iOS 18.6. Now, as far as overall performance goes on iOS 18.6, it is rock solid. I mean, we are on the 0.6 update, which very well could be the final major point update for iOS 18. So it's expected to be stable, but man, it is extremely smooth, extremely stable, really no issues on any of the devices I installed iOS 18.6 on. So if you're looking for the best stability, if you really rely on your phone, and you need it to perform the best iOS 18.6 is going to give that to you because it is rock solid in terms of performance. And because of the improved performance and also the fact that the device isn't really producing much heat on iOS 18.6 whatsoever, even after running a Geekbench test, it's surprisingly cool to the touch. So because of those two things and also some of the bugs that have been patched on the back end as well, battery life is also tremendous on iOS 18.6. Now, I would not expect a major jump from 18.5 to 18.6, but if you were having issues previously like battery drain or any type of bugs related to the keyboard or your device was getting hot, anything like that, you could very well see a nice improvement to battery life when you install iOS 18.6. But for me, on the devices I do have this running on, battery life has been great. So with that being said, should you update to iOS 18.6 on your iPhone? And I would say that if you live in the EU, absolutely. Like that you get the big changes to the app marketplaces from the web, that is a nice change for you guys. And also of course you have the app store rules that have been changed as well. You get more features really than anybody else with this update. But I would say that if you live in the US or anywhere else, it's still a good idea to update and just install it just because it could fix some bugs that you've been facing. Plus, this is an update you know, that's super deep into the development of iOS 18. Like we're so deep into iOS 18 that it's unlikely to mess anything up. So there's really no downside to updating is what I'm trying to say. Like there's no reason that you should not update at this point to iOS 18.6, especially if you're somebody who is not planning to hop on the iOS 26 betas. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Apple has not yet published the security notes yet for iOS 18.6. So there could very well be some security patches that might be pretty important so I will leave that linked down in the description below when Apple does eventually publish that, but that could make the difference in if you should update or not. So if you're kind of on the fence, if there is a major security patch, that's going to be something I would advise everybody to go ahead and update to right away. And of course, if anything changes or anything else comes up with iOS 18.6, I will discuss that in my Apple weekly episode, which I release every single Saturday or Sunday. So on the weekends, I do release those Apple weekly episodes and I will give an update on the software after you using it for a while and of course touch on any new features changes bug fixes security patches that were announced after the release okay so now let's talk about what to expect next and if ios 18.6 is going to be the final release for ios 18. now first off i will tell you that this is not going to be the final update for ios 18. it could be the final point update so it could be the final like 0.6 update because we don't always get a 0.7 update so iOS 18.7 is possible. We did see that last year, but it's not something that gets released every single year. So just keep that in mind. We could be seeing iOS 18.7 betas start pretty soon, or we might just stick to being on iOS 18.6 until September when iOS 26 comes out. And of course, until after that as well. So it would be like iOS 18.6.1, iOS 18.6.2, iOS 18.6.3, and so on. Just small, iterative updates that just include security patches and bug fixes. But of course, if Apple does decide to release something a little bit larger than just security patches and bug fixes, then we will see an iOS 18.7 as well. And then from there, we'll go 18.7.1, 18.7.2, and so on. And then of course, down here in September is when we will be seeing iOS 26 get released to the general public. So that could be anywhere, really, I would say mid to late September. So anywhere from maybe the 15th or the 22nd are two likely dates for iOS 26. Somewhere around there is when I would expect that. And then after iOS 26 releases, we will still continue to see double point updates for iOS 18 again, just for security patches and bug fixes, and those will go on for a while as well. So just keep that 
in mind. Anyways, guys, that is iOS 18.6, a pretty minor update, a very minor update, especially for being a point update, like a 0.6. Typically, those have more features and changes than what we got here with iOS 18.6. But I guess a lot of the, the work these days is going to iOS 26. But nonetheless, that is everything new here. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future iOS 18 and especially iOS 26 videos. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.